As I alluded to in the description of my video on the pregnant person fallacy, I have made a video on another one of the articles under the silencing tactics on geekfeminism.wiki. The most alarming thing about that is that free speech is considered a silencing tactic. It starts out by saying, Free speech is the idea that the public good is served by allowing everyone to state their beliefs and opinions without punishment, including very unpopular and perhaps repulsive ideas. Censorship is the restriction on speech, most commonly by a government or powerful body. Firstly, I have to give them props for a mostly fair definition of free speech. However, the problems start almost immediately thereafter. It then goes on to say that belief in free speech comes in various strengths, from strongest to weakest. Any individual discussion and forum should allow completely open and wide-ranging expression, and no one should be silenced or punished in any way for the expression of any opinion in any forum. No one should be silenced or punished by any formal group for speech or writing. No one should be silenced or punished by the government for speech or writing. No one should be silenced or punished by the government for speech or writing unless the language is likely to cause immediate harm, such as the stampede that might be caused by shouting fire in a crowded place. This bulleted list attempts to describe all different beliefs on free speech as a one-dimensional spectrum. What this does is attempt to conflate a rational idea about freedom of speech with a very irrational idea. Based on the structure of this list, the reader is very likely to read that part about speech that causes immediate harm, and strongly agree that it would be crazy to cover that as protected speech. Then they notice the only position on the list that contains the part about not protecting that type of speech also only applies to governments. Also, under their definition of free speech at the top, shouting fire in a crowded place shouldn't be covered already. This is because shouting fire isn't expressing an opinion or belief. If they intended to include forms of free speech that allow shouting fire, they should have claimed that free speech defended speech and not just the expression of beliefs and opinions. There are also plenty of other ideas about free speech which haven't been included on the chart. For example, hate speech wasn't even mentioned. I can only assume this is because it would reflect non-favorably on feminism. After the list, it goes on to say that a belief in some degree of free speech is very widespread and freedom from government censorship is respected to some extent by the law of many countries. There are people who genuinely hold the considered belief that all forms of free speech listed are desirable, but there are others who rely on recognized benefits of free speech to argue that their opinions should be tolerated in any forum without believing the same about any opposing opinions. The partially contradictory opinion in an individual forum or publisher especially if not government-controlled, has the right to refuse to publish any kind of content they choose, and that this is useful in promoting productive and civil discussion. The first clause in the last sentence of this paragraph isn't even a complete thought. It's just a subject. This happens to spoil the entire sentence, because the second clause references the first, and I don't believe that the literal interpretation of it is what they were trying to say. This seems like a good place to insert my ideas on free speech. To start... I'll pick my personal favorite normative ethics theory. The deontological approach to free speech makes it very difficult to argue against specific positions, e.g. self-censorship. It gives a paralyzing feeling that reminds me of cultural relativism, but I should save that criticism for another video. It is for this reason that I argue taking a consequentialist approach when discussing free speech. Before anyone asks, I remain unconvinced about the existence of a satisfying virtue ethics approach to free speech. I would absolutely love to hear one, though. Now, let's get into the meat of the issue. When someone wants to express their belief, there are two options. The belief can either be true or false. If the belief is true, then expressing it should be beneficial for obvious reasons. If the belief is false, then expressing it will allow the belief to be debunked. It is expression of the false belief which encourages the discourse about the belief, which could potentially convince the belief holder that they are wrong. This policy of encouraging expression is better in both situations than punishing expression. If you punish someone for expressing belief in something, what you are actually doing is encouraging them to hide their belief. If their belief is kept private, they will never learn why it is wrong. Additionally, their belief may be strengthened by the fact that the only dangerous ideas are those that are true. 
That's all there is to it. If the argument applies in the situation you are arguing about, then encourage the expression. Otherwise, don't. And then, under the Free Speech and Geek Forum section, it goes on to say, The most common disingenuous use of the right of free speech or goodness of free speech in geek arguments is to conflate it with a right to freedom from criticism. That is, to imply that critical opponents are trying to silence someone by the mere fact of being critical. Self-awareness is sorely lacking here. This article is in a category of articles on this website called Silencing Tactics, which are all just sometimes legitimate criticisms of feminists. Or that merely asking for voluntary silencing is equivalent to censorship. Voluntary silencing is code for asking someone to shut up. The astute should notice that a consequentialist approach offers a simple answer for why voluntary silencing should also be opposed. It doesn't matter if the person agrees to censor themselves. What matters is that the person won't hear a rebuttal if they can't express their opinion. The moment that it becomes a free speech issue is when the criticism is directed at whether or not they should speak, and not towards what they said. The right to free speech or claims of censorship are also commonly used to describe and criticize any group that silences or punishes anyone for speech and writing, even if that group is not backed by government authority or any formal authority at all. They need not be backed by an authority at all to do damage. And under the further reading section, it quotes, Everyone is entitled to their thoughts and opinions, and we are entitled as a community to exclude a few in order to welcome the many that have been marginalized time and time again. Excluding people does not and should not welcome others. I have never heard someone make an argument for this being the case. It is always assumed, and it bothers me to no end.